Joe here, your reliability man, bridging the gap between best practices and your reality. Today's lean driven reliability topic of the day, my 10 biggest mistakes, lessons learned, things I wished I learned years earlier in my career. Top 10. First, if you like what you're seeing, if this is the second time you've watched one of my videos, hit that red subscribe button. Really appreciate it. I need to know how many people are consistent listeners. If you hit that subscribe, that's all it does. It, it, it clicks for you. That's all it does. It doesn't lead you anywhere and you don't have to enter in any credit card information. Just hit subscribe. Also, uh, today we got a question challenge. The first three questions that get entered publicly on this video, I will feature in an upcoming video. So please do that. That's the question challenge. Okay, going to the top 10 in reverse order. So I did put some time on priority of this, so pay attention to that. This is number 10. Number 10, I don't need a coach or a guide. Uh, I, hey, I'm a plant manager. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've got here because of what I know. I don't, I do not need somebody. Um, I had two very impactful, uh, coaches in my life. Uh, I'll mention their first names, Pat and Sherry. Um, they taught me the power of observation. They taught me a three thinking, uh, they taught me chalk circle and I would not, uh, be where I am today without them. Dozens of other influencers in my life, but I'd like to note those two as coaches. Coaches frustrate me. Uh, they, they are often purist and they think of the, the, the academic answer, which may, may not be executable, but it forces me to learn a topic better when I have somebody pushing me and frustrating me. Um, you know, Pat also told me to spend three times as long as I can possibly stand in observation. Uh, and so you clearly understand current state. Uh, and, 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 you know, we uh, engineers, uh, we tend to jump to solutions too quick. Um, I think he's underestimating. I think it's 10 times as long as observation as you can possibly stand. And a guide can save years, years off your deployment by sharing, you know, uh, how to get around obstacles and customizing a plan uh, that fits your, your plan, your unique plan. So, I don't need a guy to coach is uh, something I wish I would have learned earlier. That was number 10. Number nine, hey, I'm a great manager. I can get the best out of people. I do, I do not need to make any people changes. Um, you know, there, there, I get countless examples of this. Uh, one of them that was prevalent in my plant is people became planners uh, because they were tired of being a supervisor. And there, there's unique characteristics of a planner, you know, future thinking, being able to anticipate and problem solve, uh, that may, that, uh, a, a supervisor that's good on their feet, it, it may not be the right skill set for them. So you're going to have to make organizational changes. There'll be people that just won't want to get on the bus and, uh, to speed your deployment, you're going to have to make those changes. Give them a chance, give them a chance, give them a chance, train, train, train. But, um, you got to be able to do that. So number nine, uh, you're going to have to make people changes. Number eight, part-time reliability engineers can work. I got a question on this the other day. I've never seen it work. It's an illusion. It makes you feel good. We have problem solvers. We have a problem solving structure. We've got reliability engineers. In the last video, I talked about a test to see if you really have uh, reliability engineers. Uh, I've never seen it work. Uh, urgent always takes priority over the strategic and it and it, it's killer. Number seven, blaming the craft employees work ethic and motivation. Uh, here's an example. I went to a plant and the plant manager said, hey, all my craft people do is drive around all day. They just joy ride on their scooters from building to building and they never do any work. Um, when you do observation, you learn what they're doing. You sent them out on a search and destroy mission and they're searching for parts and uh, you didn't effectively plan that job. You planned it for eight hours and it's actually only a two hour job. A lot of other things going on there. The craft people want to do a good job. They're highly skilled. The system does not support them doing a good job. So number seven was br blaming craft employees and, and uh, work motivation. Get past that. Uh, they're a strong, strong ally. Number six, 
lesson learned, mistake I've made, believing KPIs and metrics. These are heavily biased, heavily biased. You tell somebody that you're measuring them based on schedule work performance, watch it go up and nothing changes on the shop floor. Um, you know, assume they're wrong. That's a safer bet to assume they're wrong. Uh, like I said in another video, I treat them like it's my 16 year old son telling me something uh, that, he, that he did last weekend. A, a, a kernel of truth in there and a lot of things uh, missing, a lot of details missing. You know, here's an example. One plant I went to had uh, inside of their PDM percentage, as, they, as we were pushing that up, had grass cutting because it was a condition monitoring action. So grass cutting counted. And you know, that, that's just cheating, folks. That's just cheating. Uh, number five, improvement problem solving is just another tool. You know, uh, it's just as important as training your planners, just as important as having work control, a CMMS system. Problem solving is where the big bucks come in, folks. Uh, if you deploy everything, all, all the other tools in your reliability toolbox, and you don't add problem solving, you're going to be horribly disappointed with results. I got my previous video was on this topic. You're going to be horribly disappointed. Uh, I promise you, you got to improve every day. So what's your structure and what are you auditing to make sure we're getting better every day? Problem solving is huge. That's number five. And remember, these are in order, okay? Number four, sponsorship. You know, the plant manager, the VP, the, the president of, of the company, they're going to see my results. If I just go in and do good things inside of reliability and maintenance, everybody's going to know my results. That is not the case, not the case. They know your failures. Whenever, you know, they, they expect greatness and they know your failures. So you've got to connect those dots. You got to constantly uh, secure sponsorship. Your plant manager, VP, president, they get 10 ideas a day, 10, 10 uh, new actions for the year of things they want to push. Reliability and maintenance, you're competing with those. You may think it's a necessary evil, but you're competing for resources in time, money, and people. You're competing. So you got to actively secure that sponsorship. I've got another video on that. You, uh, uh, search for it. It's not, sponsorship kills reliability programs. Reliability programs don't die because of you know equipment condition. They don't uh, die because of people. They die because of lack of funding, just like a plant. They die because of lack of water and lack of nutrition. That's exactly what's going to kill your reliability program. The decisions that people make. Uh, you know, uh, you cancel an outage, for example. You come in, you got everything great. You did great FMEA, great root cause. You had these three actions you need to, to implement to prevent a problem from ever happening again and you cancel the outage. You cancel the next outage, and then it fails. You just, just gave a gut check to everybody in the organization. You know, so don't assume your sponsorship knows your message. You gotta advertise it. I got a video out on that, like I said. So that's number 10 through four. Your, so your uh, LDR uh, action for this week, who's your coach? Who's your guide? Who is challenging you and frustrating you in your organization? Are you too good for that? I wasn't. Are you too good for it? And um, uh, so make sure you find somebody that challenges your thinking. Again, got a challenge out there. Uh, first three questions uh, that I get on this video, I will feature in an upcoming video and mention your first name if you provide it for me. Hit subscribe if this is the second video you've watched. Hit subscribe. Let me know you're listening. Thank you.